Hey, it's Howard Naylor. Welcome back to The Listening Chair. Today I want to talk to you about a very controversial topic, something I've seen online um, and on social media for the past week or so, and people have gone pretty much nuts with it. But before I get into it, I'd like to just say, if you'd like our videos, please hit the subscribe button, and this way you'll automatically be notified of when our videos uh, are posted, and you can make sure you join us for our audio file journey. So let's get right to it. So today I wanted to talk to you about Macintosh. And Macintosh brand to me should not be a controversial topic, but over the past week or so, it really has been. And I think the problem really started um, a while back when Macintosh introduced the MCLK12 clock. This is not a digital word clock. This is a time clock that you can tell what time of day it is. It has the iconic Macintosh blue meters and it goes for $1,800. And some people were not too happy about that. And then um, after that, Macintosh released the AS125 amp stand, and there's a, which is about $3,000, $6,000 for the pair, and is a similar model for, that also goes for about $7,000 for the pair. And people hit the roof when they, they heard about this. Um, and in all honesty, it, it, it doesn't, to me, you can't tell that there's much more to it than a slab of wood as far as for this Amstead. It's a very nice slab of wood. It's painted very nicely, but it looks like a slab of wood. And the newest thing, and I think this is what really caused even more controversy out there, is the LB200 light box. And you might be saying to yourself, what is a light box? And this is a $1,500 item. And, um, and even before I get into it, you know, I, I went on Macintosh's website the other day and I saw an $80 polo shirt and a $45 Macintosh necktie, which no offense to Macintosh, it's the ugliest necktie I've ever seen in the world. But put that aside. So, you know, even for me, there's, there's a lot going on here, not audio related, that's, that some of these prices is, is, is starting to get a little bit too much for you. But, but let's talk about um, the, this, this LB200 light box. It's basically uh, lights up and it shows the Macintosh brand, but more than that, it is an empty box that you can put another component in, a smaller component, and Macintosh says that, you know, if your system is cluttered up with non-attractive components, you can put one of those components in the box, in this LB200 light box for $1,500, and you can hide it, and, um, uh, your system will look beautiful. Now, in all fairness, um, there's, it's not just quite an empty box. Um, there's a few things I'll, I'll talk about in there. Um, it, it, well, let me just say it, it has switching and it has IR capabilities built in. So it's not necessarily just a box, but it's a box. So I noticed uh, Jeff Dorgay of Tone Audio was quite upset with this light box. So this is not a personal attack against Jeff. I want to just address some of the points uh, that Jeff mentioned in his, in his article. So let me just get his article here. And so what Jeff said about the LB200, and I'm paraphrasing here, the LB200, nothing inside. No, really nothing. And he goes on saying, this is effed up, really effed up. Are you kidding me? Now, if it was $199 or better yet, a giveaway, hell yeah. And again, I'm paraphrasing it. But uh, Jeff says this is too much. He'll never own a piece of Macintosh gear ever again. And it's wrong on, quote unquote, so many levels. It's a major slap in the face to other companies that are actually doing something and making decent components that actually have something in the effing box for $1,500. So, I mean, when I read that, I was a little taken back because it's a it's a strong it's a strong opinion piece, which is fine, and I, I get the points here. But let me just back up for a second. You know, we all know there are audiophile companies out there. There are companies that take other people's components and they put a different case on them with a different logo, and they charge three times the price. There are also cable companies that buy twenty dollars worth of cable from China put a fancy jacket and a fancy name on it, and they charge $700, $1,500, $3,000 for that product, okay? Macintosh is not one of these companies, okay?
okay? I can tell you based on, on my many years of experience, Macintosh components, in my experience, are reasonably priced components that punch above, often punch above their weight. Now for me, I don't like to use that term, punch above their weight, but I, I found it to be true whenever I've used their gear. And you know, their gear is neutral, generally very neutral sounding. You could mix it in with the system, even a more expensive system, and the stuff will really hold its own. And I think the company was started in like 1949, and since that time they've really, in my view, they've been just making good quality products. So to attack Macintosh like that and say, I'm never gonna buy their products again, this is effing ridiculous. I mean, to me, that's just a little bit too strong. Um, I don't, I would not buy the clock or the amp stand or the light box. I would not recommend it to somebody else. And frankly, I don't think it does Macintosh a great service because it unfairly tars you know, their products that are excellent and well thought out and, and, and worth the money. But um, I just think that's a little bit too much for me. Um, I'd also note that, you know, generally a manufacturer, a lot of them, they have to go by the, you know, five times cost of goods sold. So if they're selling something for $1,500, they're not going to spend more to make the parts and put the component together than one fifth of that, which is $300. And to put together, you know, a box that has switching and glass work that's actually done in um, the United States, $300 is not a lot of money. I, I don't think it's an outrageous amount. Then again, I just, I don't think the product is, is a product that I would buy, but you know, th that's kind of my thought. Also, you know, to me, audiophiles, as long as they're of adult age and of sound mind, they don't need protection from somebody. I'm not blaming Jeff for this, but some of the comments I've seen on, on the internet, people have just really I mean, lost lost themselves over this. They've just criticized the company and laughed at it and just gone nuts. If somebody is a real Macintosh fan and this is worth it for them, I mean, who am I to criticize them? And I think the Lightbox actually was a product that was made for dealers back in the day and a lot of customers were asking for it, but it wasn't really a customer marketed product. So a lot of the dealers were charging like $2,000 for it or more. And Macintosh said, okay, we're gonna make this for our customers because we see there's a demand. So for me, I'm not gonna criticize anybody who wants to who wants to buy it. Again, it's not for me, but I don't think it warrants uh, the kind of ridicule I've been seeing online and in social media and the kind of anger that I've seen in, in like Jeff's article. Again, I'd like to just say, please, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe so you'll get notifications of our videos. And if you agree with what I've said today, if you disagree with it, uh, let us know, put your thoughts down in the comments section, and I'm curious to see what people think about it. Thanks everybody, and have a great day.